My name is Samar Al Arayev. I am the president of Sons of Bahrain, MC. I never felt like when I ride a bike, like I'm a biker. I feel like it's the place I belong. My starting of riding Harleys or riding uh, off-road bikes or riding speed bikes, it was a mean of transportation. My father is a biker, my elder brother is a biker, my younger brother is a biker, so my dad taught us how to ride bikes as a mean of transportation. So we had a home, we had these small bikes that we just commute with. It's either commuting in the neighborhood or uh, when we go to the farms, it's like riding in the farm from farm, one farm to another. I am the owner of the bike that uh, we are talking about today. It's a 2007 FL Springer. And it's one hell of a cool bike. What makes this bike cool is uh, pretty much you can, what you can do to a bike has been done to this bike. The engine has been done, the uh, sheet metal is original, original paint. The year is rare because it's the last year of the FL Springers. The bike is completely engraved. What I've done to the engine, uh, this is actually the second stage of the engine. The first time, the engine started as a 96 cubic inch. And the first stage I did to it was a 103 stage 3 high compression. I was satisfied with that for a while, and I took it on tour with that setup in 2019 in Europe. But then when I came back, I decided to actually go a bit bigger on the engine, so I went to 103 CNC uh, Stage 4. We built here by Harold Davis in Bahrain at the time, and it was tuned by uh, Hamas Arhan Bahrain and Dino by him, which the bike is uh, at 115 plus HP right now. It's a mad angry bike to uh, ride on the road. I don't think the bike is usually dangerous when it's got the big HP and the big torque because the speed is in your throttle, it's in your hand. But if you're not a competent rider, any bike that you ride, even if it's a 350cc, is a dangerous bike. Is this bike rideable? Yes. Hell yes, this is a very rideable bike. In 2019, I did a big tour in Europe on this bike from Heidelberg, Germany. Went all the way to France, Nice, and then took the bike all the way to Villach, which is uh, for Fokker C event, and then back to Germany. In 21 days, we rode the bike. I rode the bike for almost 9,000 kilometers. I really do not consider myself a biker. A lot of people say I'm a biker and all that. I, I don't think I'm a biker. I, it's sort of my lifestyle. I ride bikes. When it comes to engraving a bike, unfortunately in the Middle East, we do not have somebody who is actually good at it. I did the engraving out of California with a guy called Hernan. He's the owner of a company called Engrave It. And we worked on engraving the bikes. I kept sh shipping parts and he, he would ship them back after he chromed them, after he engraved them and chromed them and ship them back. We did that for over three years. Uh, when I had the wheels, uh, Ride Ride, Sam from Ride Ride, he built me the wheels and then he shipped them to Hernan to be engraved and Hernan shipped them back to Sam to be put together again and he shipped them to me. So when it comes to this bike, um, there is a big group who actually uh, worked on this bike. Uh, the seat is done by Fred uh, out of Misfit and he's a fantastic guy, you know. I would say the total years I spent working on this bike to get it to the stage, I would say seven to eight years in total. A question that is asked a lot, if you engrave parts on a Harley, or regardless, any bike, does it affect the performance or the integrity of the, uh, of the part? I don't think so. 
I mean, uh, with wheels, the, the wheel is so thick and they just take a small layer off to actually, it's like itching, so it doesn't affect that. The only part that I actually had problem with when I engraved was the push rods. Now with the push rod rock covers, it's like a tube that actually holds in the oil around the push rods. The layer is so thin, when it was engraved, it started leaking. Uh, when it comes to the tuning part of it, which is, is it's a very sensitive part and a lot of, um, not a lot of people can do actually that. And we have the best Middle East tuner here, which is Mohammed Sarhan. He tuned the engine. He retuned the engine as well, which he did it to me, to this bike twice. And I'm happy at the result right now at 115 HP. It's very good. That's what you said. Yeah, I need to approve the person who's buying the bike. I need to talk to a couple of people before I sell you the bike. If I'm asked what is the best advice to give somebody who wants to customize a bike, I would say pick the style you like first, not the style that your friends like. Now, involved in that is the style that you ride, because eventually, don't do a bike that you're gonna just, it's, it's not something you wanna put on a shelf. You customize it, keep riding it. I mean, th this is not a trophy. It's, it belongs on the road. Don't say my bike is gonna get rained on or gonna get dirty. No, 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 go out there, abuse it. That's the way I think of it. He just asked me how much I spend on my bike. I don't remember, not a lot. People like me, they give me things for free. It's my personality, I'm telling you. Samir is my personality. You know me now for 15 years, they give me things for free. In 99 or 2000, we started a group called Bahrain Bikers Group, BBG. And I was the vice president. Uh, Mr. Isa Kohaji was the president. And we did so well in that group that the government here, Bahrain Motor Federation, have actually talked to us and they told us they want to establish the Bahrain Motorcycle Club. Uh, we agreed and I became the vice president and uh, Isa Al-Awadi became the president and I stayed with them for, for about four and a half years uh, with the BMC, which is a, uh, a heritage in this country. BMC did a lot for Bahrain. The Bahrain Riders was established and I became uh, the president of Bahrain Riders for a uh, small time. After that, I really wanted to be free, out of clubs, out of commitment to a big group. Riding ahead and, uh, and behind you is, you know, hundreds of people. It's, it's a big responsibility. I liked it for about nine years and then I decided to actually let go. And I did. In 2017, a friend of mine came to ask me to become the director of HOG, and I did in 2018. I did it for one year. At the end of uh, the uh, year, uh, me running HOG Bahrain, we had a, um, a party for all the uh, committee members, and uh, Mr. Claude Avery, who was running Harley Bahrain, uh, decided to make me a life member, and I took it. What's up, Claude? A dear friend of mine told me not to talk about this, about the community of the GCC bikers and the community of, of actually the brotherhood. You can get me in trouble now. It's like most things. They start good, they go to bad, they go back to good, they break. I like how the community as unities, small unities are tight, but I don't like how the communities as a whole is not tight. And that that's because most biking communities are run by men. And men, there you have the alpha males and you have the beta males. And we can, you know, we like to compete. It's either we're racing or it's either shows or it's either, you know, big tours, claiming fame. So there is a competition. So it's normal. And whenever there is a big event, they do come together. If I had an advice to the community, what should be done. I would say just remember when you went and buy a bike, you bought it for fun. Have fun. 
there's nothing to be gained from not liking other bikers. Everybody have to remember that. There's nothing to be gained out of that. And there's everything to be gained out of being one community that is solid. That's what's going on. Brotherhood, help each other.